The CEBL season gets underway June 24th and joining me to talk about what we can expect is Sean Woodley. He is the play-by-play -play voice of the league and also the host of the CEBL show podcast. Make sure to check that out. Sean, let's get right into it. We know the Edmonton Stingers are the defending champs, but what's great about the league is the fact that there is just so much parity. Yeah, Vivek, that's the really fun thing about this season in the CEBL is there's really no telling just yet who the favorites are. I mean, you have the Stingers coming back like we talked about. Um, you know, they bring back the two-time reigning MVP, Xavier Moon. They bring back Jordan Baker, the reigning Canadian of the year. But they did lose a pretty important import in Travis Daniels, who now goes to Saskatchewan to bolster that roster. And all across the league, you're kind of seeing this thing where in year one of the league, you had, you know, the set of guys who sort of were the inaugural guys in the league kind of getting the, the feel of it year two it was kind of a mix but there were a lot of new faces just because of the circumstances with the cbl summer series and COVID. some guys from year one couldn't make it and you had a lot of new faces a lot of really important canadian faces making their debut last year and now this year you're kind of getting the best of both worlds where you're getting guys who were there in year one who weren't able to play last year who are now here and then guys who got their first taste of the league last year and are now going to be in the league this coming season and now the result is every team is good. Every team has, you know, three or four guys you can look at to say, hey, those guys could lead a team to a championship. So, yeah, that is the really fun part. And I can't wait to see how it all breaks down. There really is no saying. I mean, you know, Niagara is always strong. They were disappointing last year in the CBL Summer Series, but they boast a lot of talent. You know, Hamilton has got some big imports they've brought in. It's kind of all over the place. It's really difficult to pin down. And that is part of the joy of going into this year. Among the more talented names that we'll be keeping an eye out for is Trey Bell Haynes. Obviously, he's with Canada's training camp for the Olympic uh, qualifying tournament right now. Why should fans be excited to see him? Trey Bell Haynes is a fantastic success story of the CEBL, Vivek. He came into the league a couple years ago. You know, he was kind of drifting around Europe, got some run in the G League with the Wisconsin Herd, but never really could get a foothold as a pro. He comes to the CEBL. He's one of the best players in the league in year one. He continues that last year for Niagara on a disappointing Niagara team. He was clearly their best player. And then this past year, he got a job in, in the Bundesliga in Germany, won the Offensive Player of the Year, which is not a small feat, and now comes back, and he's just like this seasoned Canadian mainstay. He's been part of FIBA qualifiers in the past. You know, when Team Canada's had to roll out their B and C squads with NBA guys playing in season, Trey Bell Haynes has been there. And I think he's kind of a stealthy choice to potentially make the Olympic roster, considering the lack of guards with Jamal Murray and Shea Gildas Alexander not there. They might want that offensive punch, you know, that Bundesliga MVP winning punch. And I could see him making the team, which would be a huge blow to the Niagara River Lions for for sure you know the river lions are entirely built around trey bell haynes and his distribution and his you know threat at the point of attack and if he's on team canada it's obviously a wonderful success story for trey bell haynes it's a wonderful success story for the cebl but that will certainly throw a wrench into the title conversation if he is able to play i mean he's just so dynamic he's such a great offensive player he can take guys off the bounce he can shoot off the bounce and you know he's also got a flair for the dramatic if you have ever sort of followed the cebl socials he has one play last year in the elam ending which is of course the way the cebl ends their games you know he had probably the most exciting finish you know, uh, you know, in a tie game, it was next bucket wins, a fast break bucket just kind of beats the entire opposing team down the floor and scores to move on and, and, you know, advance to the playoffs for Niagara last season. He kind of is the straw that stirs the drink there. And if Coach Vic Razzo doesn't have him because he's with Team Canada, that's going to be a big blow for sure. But, you know, either way, we're going to see a lot of Trey Bell Haynes this summer, which is pretty exciting. Sean, which other Canadians are you most looking forward to watching? Alex Campbell played for the Saskatchewan Rattlers in his first season. He was in the league in year one. He was kind of this pivotal figure because Saskatchewan started the first year of the league as this very import heavy team. You know, they had a couple of guys who were G league experienced and all that. And then halfway through the year, those guys left and it kind of became a team oriented around Alex Campbell. And the best way I can describe Alex Campbell is he's the closest approximation in the CEBL to Kyle Lowry. The dude just knows how to win. The dude knows how to score when he needs to. He's a great playmaker. 
playmaker, great distributor, awesome defender, and he won the CEBL Finals MVP back when Saskatchewan won their, won their title in 2019. He missed last year due to COVID and just sort of the inconvenience of playing, but now he's signed on with the Fraser Valley Bandits. You know, assistant GM over there, Robert Sacre, every, you know, Canadian basketball fans know Alex Campbell's going to be on that Fraser Valley team, which has made some pretty important signings. You know, they brought in a former 2019 champion as well, Shaquille Keith, who played last year with Ottawa. But Alex Campbell, I think, back in the league is a great thing for everybody because he's just a fun dude to watch and he's a guy who knows how to win. And another Canadian who's really intriguing to watch as well is Justin Jackson. You may know him. He was a Maryland Terrapin. He was a second round pick of the Denver Nuggets and had some horrible injury issues. You know, he was kind of thought to maybe have come out of the college a little bit too early. Maybe he should have waited a year to enter the draft. Either way, he is now latched on with the Guelph Nighthawks, coached by Charles Kissy, of course, of Raptors 905 and Brock University fame. And I'm really excited to see what Justin Jackson can do. He's the kind of guy, he's a 6'7 forward. He's going to have a size advantage over most guys in this league. And if he can kind of get back into form, he could be one of those next great CEBL success stories where maybe he latches on with a big team in Europe or something like that. Uh, those are the two guys in terms of other Canadians. I mean, there's so many Canadians in the league to keep an eye on. The imports are super fun as well. You got Xavier Moon, the returning two-time MVP, but those two guys in particular are guys I'm going to have my eye on early in the season. And it all begins June 24th. We can't wait to see it. Sean, thanks so much for this, and thanks to all of you for watching.